Anyhow, Pastor Jack called me one day and uh, wanted to know if I would be interested in going to Russia, to Habarsk, Russia Far East, as a matter of fact, which is about as far into Russia as you can get right across the water from China. And I thought of a hundred reasons why I could not go, shouldn't go, didn't want to go, ended up going. <laughs> so we had a meeting, and how many of you know my friend Florence uh, Virus, Kilgore, Florence Kilgore Virus? Anyhow, she was kind of the pusher for this. I think you'd be the perfect one to go over there, Joyce, because you're not afraid to talk. Listen to who's talking. <laughs> Florence, listen to who's talking. <laughs> not afraid to talk, okay? Well, I'm really, I'm not afraid to talk. I'm just afraid you'll say something that's maybe you shouldn't be saying in public. But, but I started praying about it. But I think I want to back up. I think I want to back up to when I was in the ninth grade. Okay? So, looking back, uh, I, was born, I was raised in the Catholic Church, however, the Byzantine Catholic, however, I loved to go to the Baptist Church and the Methodist Church with my girlfriends. We would meet in downtown Sharon and take turns going to different churches. And um, I believe I was in the ninth grade when the uh, Sunday school teacher at that church asked if everybody in that room had been born again, if they had an experience and invited Jesus into their life. I didn't know what he was talking about. Yeah. Just, what are you saying? What, what do we need to do? And so he came over later and he said, you have the strangest, you have a funny look on your face. And I said, I'm not sure I know what you're talking about. He said, well, it's very easy. Have you ever invited Jesus into your life? Yeah. I mean, does it get any easier than that? Mm -hmm. I didn't think so. So, <laughs> and I said, no, I, I guess I didn't, but I, I think I know about God and I know a little bit about Jesus. Does that mean I'm born again? And he said, no, why don't we pray? I danced all the way, I did, I prayed with him. I danced all the way from downtown Sharon, Sharpsville Avenue, almost up to, well, Fisher Hill, if you know where that's at, okay? Up Fisher Hill, turned left on my street, and I was still skipping and happy and like, wow. You just, you can't explain that feeling until you have actually, right? Yes. When you know that you have invited Jesus into your life and he's going to guide you and you can ask him. Sometimes he says yes, sometimes he says no, sometimes he says wait. Yes. Just hold tight. Well, anyhow, uh, Pastor Jack called me one time and he said that uh, he had been, uh, kind of enlisted to run this program called Christian, uh, Christian Morals and Ethics. And they were doing it not just in the Methodist Church, but all over, all over the world. And he had picked Russia to get people, <laughs> okay, uh, do I want to go to Russia for a whole year? Well, Florence was the one that kept pushing me and pushing me, Joyce, You'll love it. You know, if God has called you to do this, you don't dare say no. You just don't dare say no. You'll miss a blessing. Okay, so we had a meeting, found out that the only catch to this was I had to raise $10,000. <laughs> that, that took care of my airfare over, my food, my apartment. And uh, I thought, oh, that's good. Nobody's going to donate $10,000. Well, Florence had a meeting, uh, took everybody out to dinner. There was a lot of people. Don, God bless him, him and his first wife donated $1,000. And uh, my mother gave $1,000. And let's see, who was the third one? I forget. Anyhow, three people donated $3,000. And I thought, uh-oh. Perhaps I'm on my way to Russia. <laughs> Does this mean they like me or they're trying to get rid of me? I wasn't quite, yeah, really, I, I really wasn't quite sure uh, where I stood at that point. But we had to go down to Baltimore, Maryland to a training session where I met Charlene Rice 
uh, she lives down by Harrisburg. And we became bosom buddies and we're still friends today. We don't see each other a lot, but we talk, we email back and forth. And uh, she's been an inspiration in my life. So, and I hope I've done the same for her. So life goes on and one by one, envelopes, letters, all kinds of little mementos would come. Please take this to Russia with you and remember that we're back home praying. Somebody gave me a cute little cross I'm sorry I don't remember all of this now because it's been too many years ago, but little things started happening like, okay, I know this is going to be a wonderful, a wonderful, a wonderful year. So we did our training down in Baltimore, and finally comes the happy day, got on an airplane, ended up in Habarsk, Russia, Far East. Now everybody there seemed, I think everybody in the whole city knew Jack, and it was like a, a wedding procession. People were coming from everywhere, everywhere to welcome us to Russia. I've never seen a scene like that in any airport before. So they escorted us. They had a little limousine. It wasn't one of those great big showy ones, but a nice little car with a chauffeur that took us to our apartment which happened to be on the fifth floor. <laughs> up, landing, up, landing, up, landing, up, landing, up to the fifth floor. Everything that we needed, everything that we used, went up and down five flights of stairs before we ever touched anything. Five flights. I think I lost about 15 pounds the first two months, <laughs> which means Exercise, ladies, exercise. It works like a charm. It really does. Well, anyhow, time marches on, and uh, we started working with a group of young women, Christian Morals and Ethics. They were in the college right across the street from where our apartment just happened to be. Now, I don't know who picked that apartment, and I don't know if they knew where that school was, but boy, it was perfect. We didn't need transportation. That saved us money. We just got outside, crossed the street, into the building, and we were there. In fact, uh, my granddaughter was little then. We were in this school one day, and somebody put her up on, do you remember this story, Sherry? They put her up on a table, and they started asking her questions. And she was just little. How old was she, three? Not quite three. Not quite three. And they were asking her all kinds of questions. Da 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 da. You know, she didn't say yes or no. Yes, I have a dog, and the dog's name is blah 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 blah. And the one girl says, "You really have a you really have a good vocabulary." Okay. Well, later that day, we're back in my apartment, and Helen, who turned out to be one of my best friends because she spoke Russian and English both, she came up with her granddaughter, and they're sitting there playing on the floor. And Michelle looked at me and she said, Grandma, uh, oh, wh what is a, uh, I've lost my train of thought, what is a vocabulary? Is that something good? Yeah, that's all the words you know. Okay, and she was satisfied with that. She, she was okay with that. So anyhow, that was my lead in into uh, teaching in Russia. Uh, and some of you have already met Andre, not everybody, but we have a young Russian man. I invited him to come and see us, uh, what was it, Don, four years ago? <laughs> Three or four years ago, and he's still at our house. He's still, he's living in the basement now. Andre's been here, he's visited a time or two in this church, but he translates, and so it's hard for him to get out on Sunday morning. So where am I going with all of this? Go tell it on the mountain. Amen. What do we have to tell? <clears throat> How deep is our affection to Jesus? How often do we take our bodies and go pray with somebody? Now, I know my husband does. The minute that phone rings, if there's somebody in need, he is out the door and going to visit that person. Amen. Always, without fail. I don't know as if he's ever told anybody that he's too busy. I just don't think you have. Have you, Don? <laughs> if he did, he didn't tell me. 
he didn't tell me. And the blessings that I have from all of this is the fact that you have made a change in somebody's life. Right. You've taken him out of the darkness and put him into a place where you know he's going to know, or she, they're going to know the Lord just like you do and walk with them. Not just, okay, I'll go to church on Sunday, but do your best, do your best to walk with Jesus. Now, I know I've been rattling on, but I wonder if anybody has a question. Anybody have anything you'd like to ask? Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> All right, Dawn, stand. I didn't prompt that. I didn't tell him to say <laughs> Stand up, honey. Uh, what about your house? Oh, your yeah. Office? Yeah, that takes my daughter in. She is at work now talking to her supervisor. You know what that crazy mother of mine's doing? <laughs> Do you have any idea what she's doing? <laughs> Something to that effect. What is she doing? She is going to Russia for a year. <laughs> and this other man, he was a supervisor too, wasn't he? Well, anyhow, another worker. You better tell the story. Okay. She was looking for someone to um, kind of take over her house yes. while she was gone. And we had a friend was moving, looking for a house to buy. It was raining. So he moved in and took care of her house. Took he ended up cleaning out her whole basement, organized oh. that, <laughs> organized her whole back for broad. Oh. And took care of my grandmother and her sister. My mother and lived right her next her door. <laughs> Talked my husband into tearing down an old shed that was back behind their house. Oh. <laughs> and so he took care of her very well. Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, and then he wanted to know if I would charge him rent. <laughs> Are you? No, I'm not going to charge you rent for doing and not only that, when I came home, he had this beautiful little uh, fan put up in my, because I didn't have air conditioning in the house. I don't think anybody knew what air conditioning was way back then. But I did not have air conditioning in the house. And so he put up uh, a nice little fan in there, which is still, I guess, in that room. Uh, and that was my experience going to Russia. And how many people am I still in contact with? Quite a few, True. quite a few. A doctor and his wife, Lena's sick now, she's having some problems, and she, she emails me about every third or fourth day, are you praying for me? Why do I still feel bad? And I said, well, you just believe that God's answering your prayers. What do you tell somebody? What do you tell somebody when they think God's not answering their prayers? Well, it's his timing, right? Yeah. Amen. God is using this for some reason that, to which I don't know, and I'm not going to pretend I know, but sooner or later, God will answer. I don't believe any prayer, any prayer goes unanswered. When you take something to the Lord, he, he puts you in a position where maybe you have to learn something first Amen. before you can tell somebody. Does that make sense? Okay. I see some heads nodding, yeah. But that's the way I feel. If you want to help somebody, you better know the word. You better know Jesus in your own personal life. And if you're going to talk the talk, you better walk the walk too. Right? right. You're thinking something, Tony. <laughs> I can see the look in your eye. <laughs> okay, anybody else have any questions? John. Uh, are the people over there accepted of Jesus Christ? Yes. That was amazing. One of the first things we did was start a little Bible study upstairs on the fifth floor in my little apartment. My apartment was probably, the living room was probably as big as this little section right here of these seats. And it was so full that people were crowded, standing in the doorway, sitting on the floor. I mean, they were just jammed in there. I'll bet I had as much as 50 or 60 people in there, me and Charlene. And we would just take one verse, one verse at a time, and they'd read it, talk about it, read it again. Yeah. And after they talked for about 10 minutes, anybody change their mind? And they started, oh, I, I think maybe I have changed my mind. And it was amazing the way they just, they just pulled in the words. Another uh, incident, 
we lived right around the corner from the bus stop. So one day, I, I was going to another church, and uh, we had two pastors there that we were working with, Pastor Yuri and um, uh, Roma. Roma was here one time, I believe. Yes. Yeah, right? Yeah. And um, anyhow, I was going to the other church, and I walked out of my apartment out to the bus stop, and in my apartment, there wasn't any wind blowing, but when I got out on the street, it was freezing cold. I didn't have a coat on. I had a dress on with a little, uh, just a little wee tiny sweater over. This lady came out of nowhere, took off her coat, had a gray sweater on under her coat, gave me her sweater. She put it, and she's going, Zimna, Zimna. You know what that means? Cold. Huh. I knew that word. Cold, yes. And so she just tucked it around me real nice. And uh, now my bus was coming. And thank goodness those buses didn't have names on them. They just had numbers. I knew I was number five to the church I was going to. And I turned around to tell her thank you. She was gone. Wow. I mean, she was absolutely gone. Another little funny story. The lady that lived on the fifth floor right across from us, um, we found a little box about this big, three little pots of flowers. Charlene planted them. Those crazy little flowers would not gr bl bloom. They wouldn't grow in that whatever it was. It looked like dirt, but I'm, I think it was gravel. I don't know for sure what it was. That lady went to a friend of hers who owned horses, and she had a little bit of, you know what, <laughs> like, what is that? And she goes, <laughs> so, so we caught on that maybe that was fertilizer. <laughs> and sure enough, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, we'd put that in and mix it in, and that dirt just to shove those flowers out. So we just learned all kinds of lessons over there. I'm not sure I practice them here at home today, but, but when you're desperate, you do, you do allow people to help you, right? Talk about cooking. Pastor Yuri, Pastor Roma. I invited them over to lunch one day, and I made pierogies. <laughs> and they, you know, all know what pierogies are? Okay, pretty much you do a little dough with potatoes or cheese or whatever inside. And Roma spoke better English. Yuri, uh, he knew a word or two, but not very many. So they were talking to each other, and Roma would talk to me. Hey, where'd you learn to make these? Where'd I learn to make them? I grew up on those. <laughs> and when they found out that I was of Ukrainian descent, full-blooded, my grandmother came over here when she was 16. She was supposed to marry a coal miner from Pittsburgh. She was 16. This guy turned out to be 40 years old. And she took one look at him, and the tears were running down her cheeks. And she said, I can't marry you. You're too old. And besides, you're ugly. So, <laughs> honest. That's the story my mother told me, so I'm hoping it's true. I don't want to sit in church and tell a fib, but I'm pretty sure that was true. But anyhow, uh, my grandmother then got a job, not with this guy, but she was earning enough money that she wanted to go back to the Ukraine. In the meantime, uh, down on, um, oh, it's right off of Sharpsville Avenue, there's a little uh, Ukrainian church there, and she started attending that church where she met my grandfather. So they were happily married until they both died. And, uh, and so our whole family of uh, Ukrainians, we don't, we don't have any mixed blood that I know of until I married Dawn. <laughs> so any more questions? I think that's about the end of my, yes, honey? What year did you go? Uh, 2000, what year? Nineteen ninety-seven. Yeah, yeah. Nineteen ninety-seven, and it was awesome. Really, it's an adventure to go into a, a strange land, a strange country, and see. And I did tell you about the gray sweater, right? Yeah, I had that in my mind to tell you too. Okay. How about all the pies that you made? 
the what? Eyes. Oh dear, oh dear, yes. Uh, that's another thing. That got me in touch with this <laughs> communist group. <laughs> Andre could tell you more about that than I could. But anyhow, there was three guys. I don't know how they found out about our apartment, but they didn't know what was running in there because all these people were going up and down the stairs. And so one day, this guy who had to be six foot ten or something, we had little peek holes that you could look out and see who was at your door. And I looked out and I swear I saw his belly button. Uh, I mean, he, he was that. I, I, I'm not kidding. <laughs> I looked out and I thought, who is this jolly good giant here that's sitting outside? <laughs> and so we invited him in. And Jack Stevenson, he about had, would you get me a tissue, Tony, please? Would you get me a tissue? Oh, she's got to get needed in here. I'm sorry, I'm either laughing or crying. I'm not sure which. <laughs> oh, thank you, dear. Um, so anyhow, anyhow, these guys were from the mafia. And three of them, yeah, they were. The three of them came in and wanted to talk, and what were we doing there, and who paid our way, and who did this, and who did that, and who did the next thing, until I thought, what is this guy? He wanted us, me and Charlene, to work for them. Because, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> I'm not working for a bunch of communists. But they came, they came, they came, almost. Now, they didn't come every week but almost every week until it was time for us to come home. Yeah, we had these three or four guys, sometimes there was five, and they would sit there and listen to our Bible study. I always made them sit on the couch because the younger people were sitting on the floor. I thought, well, we'll give these guys a good dose here. And most of these kids uh, spoke, most of them, not all of them, spoke Russian. So you can imagine, I had this 16-year-old little girl that would translate for me. And she, I gave her a dollar every time she came. And she was there like three hours. But anyhow, she came and translated for us. And these guys would just sit there and look. They would, they never move their head. They'd just sit there and stare at you the whole time. So they took me. In fact, that was the day you came. That was the day you came. What? What? Oh, yeah, I fed them. Of course, that's what brought them there. <laughs> you, always, you always feed them. You feed your friends. But Sherry was at the airport, and these guys, they took me out to this farm, me and Charlene, and they were having a picnic out there. They had a bunch of women, I guess, from their church. I don't know. They didn't speak English. But they were cooking this fantastic meal, and there's my daughter downtown waiting for a ride. How'd you get back to the... Okay, somebody came and picked them up, and okay, so now I have my daughter back <laughs> with her daughter. But what an adventure, what an adventure. You know, I could have stayed home, I could have said no, I could have said I don't have the money, I don't have this, I don't have that. But when you start a project and you know in your heart that God is directing you, all things work together for good, don't they? All things work together for good. And I tell you, that's an adventure I would bless everybody with. If you have a chance, yes? I don't think they understand about the, the lady that had the sweater and that, how she disappeared. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, she had a coat on. She had this sweater under the coat. Took the coat off, took the sweater off put it over my shoulders, and I'm trying to put it on and, you know, get warm again because I was freezing outside, turned around to say thank you because she was right behind me. And it was nothing but a big, long sidewalk there, just a big, long sidewalk. And the road was here, and the trolleys were coming, and number five was ready to pick me up. No lady. I have no idea where she disappeared. No, I think we had a little angel in disguise there. I don't know what it was, but, but it was... There she was, passing up. Yeah. Yes, honey. Were any of those mafia men, were any of them converted? You know, 
I think two of them were. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think two of them at least were reading the Bible because they, yeah, they would ask me a couple of questions which had to go through this 16-year-old girl as a translator, and I'm not sure she really translated exactly what they were saying, so I tried to put two and two together. But one day I caught the guy crying, and there was tissues right there, and I handed him a tissue, and I said, when God touches your heart, and she's right here beside me trying to tell him, and he goes, Yani Pani Mayu, Yani Pani Mayu, I know what you mean, Yani Pani Mayu, something like that. Okay, if you know what I mean, God bless you. So, but every day over there was an adventure. Every single day, something different would happen. Something different. And both of the fellows that translated, I must have made an impression on them. They both came to America. Vova lives out in California, and I was visiting my daughter out in California one time, the other daughter, the baby daughter, and we went to see him, and he just could not rave enough about coming to America and how glad he was that those teams from America came and told him there was a better life. You know, the, the Russian people, the Ukrainian people, have it hard. Their government isn't givey, givey, givey like us. Everybody here, I'm now I'm preaching, wants everything for nothing. Did you ever hear of getting a job? You know? Did you ever hear of getting a job? Okay. So that's the end of my sermon. <laughs> Get a job and work. Yes, honey? Did the people that came to hear you have access to the scriptures themselves? I think they did, but they were all in Russian. So... Yeah, yeah, Ukrainian. Of course it was. Everything was. Um, in Pastor Yuri's apartment, he had one little room where this grandma was there, Bubba, we called her. She never got out of bed. I never saw her out of bed. She was either under the covers or sitting on the edge of the covers. And we used to take little treats into her, things I would make cupcakes, whatever, you know, just one or two because she couldn't eat too much. But uh, when I missed a couple of days, she would call Yuri, where are the Americans? <laughs> so apparently, uh, apparently she appreciated us too. I don't well, wasn't there a group of Baptists? There was a lot of students that were, there was that Baptist kind of group. Oh, yeah. A lot of college students that were meeting like all the time. Yeah, well, yeah, those are the ones that uh, we were at their school. Right, that's that, Yeah, that's right across the street from where I lived. And we used to go in there, and, and they, the school gave us permission to come in and talk to those kids about the Bible. They didn't, nobody seemed to care. And I always thought that would be almost next to impossible mm -hmm. to go into a foreign country like that. and. You know, start, and I said, well, let's just read a page or two, and of course, this little 16-year-old, <laughs> Andre couldn't stand her, tell her to shut up, <laughs> but, but it was funny because she wanted to learn. She wanted to know what I was doing, what Charlene, what we were doing there, and she just, she just every, every word I said, I'm sure she translated correctly. She used to write to me, oh, maybe once a month, but I haven't heard from her for a couple years, so I don't know what happened. Lost that connection. Now, was Andre your interpreter, too? Andre, yeah, is very talented. We went to Yuri's church, and he could spot an American just like that. <laughs> and so he sat right behind us. And, would you like me to translate for you? And I said, oh. I, what is he? Is he, you know, okay, yes. I said, yes, we would. And so we became friends right away. And he'd, he'd come over to the house and he'd run, uh, what's going on? Uh, you can't hear? So Andre would run, uh, Andre and Vova both would run oh, to the grocery store for me, to the post office, no postal, no, no mailboxes on your front porch, you had to go six, seven, I forget, seven or eight streets up 
to get to the post office. And I said, well, here, I'll give you, I don't know, a quarter or whatever it was to get on the trolley. No, we'll walk up. They'd run up to the post office, and in 15 minutes, they'd be back. No mail today. <laughs> so, oh, uh, uh, dear. Yes. How long were you there? One whole year. But I mean, as you were going, you were apprehensive. Uh -huh. so how long were you there before you felt the peace of God? You said, I belong here. Is it when somebody accepted Christ, or was that before that? I think it was when I started walking up that stair. There was just like a presence there. And I said to Charlene, because we both had suitcases we were carrying, and the guy, I don't know, we had about five suitcases between the two of us. And the guy that was supposed to help us dropped us off at the door and took off. He didn't carry anything up, so we had to drag it all, all upstairs. But I know that they appreciated being there, and different people would stop by with little gifts, little, I, well, I think I said the Lady Cross gave us bread and different little things like that. No, the, the, the Ukrainian, Russian, whatever, Russia, Far East, I guess, uh, Russia, they're very loving. They're not what you hear. I think the majority of the people, and that's just my opinion, because most of the people that I met were very loving. Very, very, Steve. I've traveled around a lot of countries. Mm -hmm. so the, the question I'm going to pose to you is, when you went to Russia and you came outside of America mm -hmm. and saw how people lived in another country or different countries, uh -huh. How long did it take you to realize how lucky you were? Amen. <laughs> About two seconds. Everything was old-fashioned. Everything. I mean, even a can opener. They didn't have an electric can opener. You had one of those things where you had to squeeze it, you know, and turn it, and just, I mean, nothing, nothing modern. And maybe that was just our apartment. We didn't, we didn't really get invited into too many apartments. Uh, we used to pick a couple of ladies, maybe two or three. They never, these women never got to go out for lunch. You know, what do we think about grabbing a friend? Hey, let's, let's go down and have a hamburger someplace. Never. They just didn't do that because food was cheaper at home. And so that was a huge treat when we, Charlene and I would take people and go out for maybe an hour, an hour and a half. They would brag about that. Oh, we got to go eat with Joyce and Charlene. It was a good experience. Nope, it was, it was wonderful. I cried all the way home. I thought, I'll never see these people again. That was my thought coming home. I'll never, yeah, Steve? My wife wants to know what? Is it hard, was it hard to pick up the language? Who said I picked up the language? <laughs> Did I say that? <laughs> no, no. I know I knew a few words, Dolly, but I, I didn't know too many words. And I should have because my grandmother spoke Ukrainian, and, and that's very similar to Russian. And I should have known more, but I didn't, unfortunately. Sam? You said that Florence was very influential. Oh, yeah. To go there in the first place. Uh -huh. So I'm very interested to hear about your first conversation with her when, after you're over there. Well, when I told her how much money I had to earn, she says, oh, that's nothing. She said, we'll just have this little dinner. Okay, so we were up at the Hickory VFW, and she must have had, I don't know, 50, 75 people there. I don't remember exactly how many, but a whole ton of people. And <laughs> I don't know, for some sweet reason, different people, Don and his wife gave a $1,000, and my mother and another couple, and Florence and Jim. And I, I got promised half of what I needed. And the rest of the money started coming in in little checks, little checks. And then we had a box here that Jack Stevenson would get, and he would bring money over. Well, he had a ton of money, and someone stole his case that he was carrying, yeah. And he gets over there, and he was almost in tears because, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And here, 
the people that stole that case off of him took all the stuff inside except the American money. I don't think they knew what it was. And they threw it in a garbage can, and somebody found it and took it to the police. And of course, TJ, uh, where's Ron? Why go? Oh, Ron, what was TJ's real name? <laughs> Ron, Ron came over to visit, and we never called him anything but TJ. And I keep thinking, why didn't we ever know? Why didn't I ever know his name? Because he never told anybody his name. TJ Horn, that's all I knew. Hey, TJ. Hey, TJ. But he would, uh, he would knock himself out backwards to do anything that we asked him to do. Whatever we wanted to go, wherever he would. Like one time, we went to uh, see Romeo and Juliet. It was in Russian, but underneath was English. And so when we came out of the theater, everybody started yelling, yeah, Mariganka. She's an American. She's an American. And so here comes this TV reporter and shoves a microphone in my mouth. And you know how bashful I am. I didn't know how, when to stop. <laughs> so, yeah, da, 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 da. So anyhow, he asked me if I'd ever seen I said, Oh, yes, we've seen the play, and we've seen the movie, and we've read the book and everything. We know all about Rome. Oh, Romeo and Juliet, so beautiful, so beautiful. And it is, you know, it is beautiful. So we got to see an American movie. I get home, back up my five flights of stairs, and there's all kinds of people calling. Is Joyce there? She's on television. Turn television on. <laughs> so, so I'm now popular. I'm a TV star on TV. Oh. And I always seem to be the one, maybe it's because I have a big mouth, but Charlene would always step back about three steps so nobody asked her questions. <laughs> and, and I was always the one that would answer the question. I said, Charlene, all you speak in English. You're, you know, you're a school teacher. What the heck's the matter with you? Why do I get to do all the talking? Because uh, you do it so well. Okay. <laughs> and that was really going over and over. Yes. Wanted to know what when you come back and we were talking with, with Florence, what did she have to say? Yeah. Florence? Oh my. I don't know as if she said anything except she was extremely glad to have me back. I mean we did <laughs> we did everything together. Florence and I were buddy 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 buddies. Buddy buddies. Very good. But I meant did you like kind of thank her for Pushing you to go because it was such a great experience. Oh, I did that all the time. I, I would email her and write to her and do all kinds of stuff. And, because we did. We really did great things there. Oh, and that mafia group, they took me out. That's where I was the day you come in. Uh, they took me out to this farm. And I was the only American, but there was a Russian that understood the, the language. And here they had three women in the kitchen cooking this fabulous thing. I don't know, I think it was a pig. It didn't look like a pig, but on a rotisserie, uh, they had this animal, but all kinds of good food. Okay, I got to go to the airport. My daughter's coming in. No, they'll get. So anyhow, Sherry was not met at the airport by her mother. <laughs> but she, you made it to the apartment, didn't you? Hmm. Yep, made it to the apartment. I'm sorry, my nose is dripping. Oh. Any more questions? What else do you think about way back? When you were uh, you were there and all that the whole year, did, you, did they have customs or what did you feel like if if you were there for the whole year, you were there Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year, all that um, holiday? Do they celebrate? They, they do, but not like we do. It's mostly around food. You saw very few lights. Downtown in Habars, there's, don't ask me why, but in the middle of nowhere, they have like this great big, huge swimming pool, probably from here to the street. Not very wide, but it was, the kids used to go in there and swim in this water, and it was, always looked kind of mucky. I wouldn't have wanted to go in there. But uh, we'd stand there and talk, and people would come up to us, are you an American? And how do they know we're an American? 
Do Americans look different? Do we smell different? Do we talk different? <laughs> What's different about? But you do kind of know that, and I think the way we dress too. You know, we had little, little better clothes than they, most of them did. You could tell their clothes had been worn and worn and worn and worn and worn. And we kind of fell in love with this one little grandma. She never, I never saw her off of her bed. When she knew we were coming, she would either sit on the bed or if she was real tired, she would lay down and pull the blanket up over her and uh, somebody would translate for us because she couldn't speak English. But we used to go in and I'd just hold her hand, rub her hand and just talk to her and be nice, stay for half an hour and I always took her a little treat, something candy or some little thing. So we made a friend with grandma and she died right before right before we came home, but we could not go to the funeral that time. We just, we were booked to do other things. And this mafia crowd too, they had helicopters. <laughs> hey, girls, you wanna go on a helicopter ride? Uh, sure, Charlie said, not me. <laughs> so guess who went on the helicopter ride? We were gone for about an hour and I thought, oh God, please let there be enough gas in this thing to get us back, get us back to this field where we're coming out of. Yeah, that was a good one. Why, why, why? <laughs> and you're all thinking, that girl really is wild. <laughs> I've toned down, haven't I, honey? <laughs> no, <laughs> Dawn. <laughs> that's not. That's not nice. <laughs> you know what? I think at one point there was a KGB guy in with them, because asking questions and spoke fluent English, and I, I just, you know, as best I could, told him about. Uh, Christian morals and ethics and how this program was going around the world, not just in Russia, but it was going around the world. That's why they made such a fuss over, you know, getting enough people in each country to carry this program on. I don't know how, that, it lasted at least 10 years and maybe still part, you know, may still be going on. I've lost track of that, I don't know. But what's the difference in your life when you're a Christian or you're just a good person. What is the difference in your life? Is there a difference in your life between being a good person and a Christian person? What, hon? I said, if it was the same in everybody's life, it would be so dull. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it could be, but when you're a Christian, I think you listen more to the Lord, you get directions. A lot of times, haven't you ever been doing something and all of a sudden you think, you know, I better call so-and-so, or I better do this or that. There's a hand waving back there, Deb, what are you up? You asked about the difference. The difference is that when we are just uh, trying to be moral and uh -huh. good, okay, you're always trying to be better and better, and yeah. better. but when you have Jesus, right. he, the, he's your Lord and your Savior, and you do things through him. Absolutely, because you're thinking, I think he gives you a portion of his thoughts, doesn't he? When we accept Christ as our Savior, we have the heart of God. We want to serve the Lord. You know, we don't want to just get there and say, oh, hallelujah, I'm a Christian now, and go your happy, merry way. You begin, you want to serve him, and it could be in all kinds of little ways. You know, even, even going into an old folks' home, <laughs> we used to go up to Polk when I got home. And, you know, a lot of those people are really out there. And this one guy, he always had a suit and a tie and everything on. And he'd always come up to us when he'd see us coming. He kind of sat in the lobby all the time. We'd go in and he'd talk real nice. And I'd say, well, who's here that we haven't visited yet? Is there somebody new we need to visit? No, he said, just pick a room. Here I found out he was one of the inmates. <laughs> but he took it upon himself because he knew we would go into different rooms and talk to people and just to touch them. 
you know, just to maybe rub their shoulders or something, just to let them know that you're not afraid, you know, to be kind to them. Amen. You know how good it feels when you're in bed and your husband gives you a back rub, <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> so, but, but they, yeah. people enjoy Amen. being touched. It's like they're not... Right. And I was I, in Europe, and me and Aaron Cornelia remembered Aaron. for about two or three weeks. And we were, well, we're always leading people to the Lord, you know. And so we're driving to the airport with this taxi cab driver, and they, I start talking, and they start talking, mm -hmm. so I can't speak uh, Spanish and all these other languages. Mm -hmm. That's what was always hindrance to me. He's the only guy that can speak. And uh, mm -hmm. anyway, this taxi cab driver said, I want what you got. <laughs> this taxi cab over. Yeah. And we pray for him right now. Uh, good. <laughs> See, God opens the doors. You just need to be, God will open the doors if Amen. you're willing to step through. Amen. If you're willing. And it's not hard, you know. It's really not hard because all those thoughts and all those words really come to you. Okay, people are starting to look at their watch. So if there's no more questions, I think maybe we'll have Don. Uh, do you want him to say a little closing prayer, Steve? Uh, or do you have anything to add? No, I, I was just going to get Tony to do a couple of songs. Okay. But Don can do a closing prayer. Yeah. Okay, sit down. But do not. the songs. The bad, the, <laughs> bad, the bad thing you don't know about her is... Uh-oh. <laughs> now be careful. <laughs> now be careful. <laughs> Uh, turn that camera off, Steve. <laughs> Come on, Pastor. This is for all the men. Uh-uh. You kept feeding me this hung what, Hungarian food? Ukrainian. Ukrainian food. No. It's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We, I was single and so was she. And, and what's going on here? <laughs> well, <laughs> this time when we got married, I said, there's one thing I don't, two things I don't do in my life. I've been, Berta used to take care of my house and then when I was single and make my beds and, and I don't make beds and I don't do this, I don't do that. He does now, though. No, <laughs> but one, day, one day she was pushing a sweeper. Now, she said, if you put that sweeper over there in the corner there, and I'm here, and the corner right over the wall, and I thought for a minute, and I said, okay, he said, now you can do sweep, and I said, wait a minute, <laughs> and one thing I told him, I haven't pushed the sweeper since I was four years old, <laughs> that's who's pushing the sweeper, <laughs> then I said, I don't make my beds either, <laughs> that's who's making their beds, well, it's easier when there's two people, one on each side, well, right? You do. How many years did it take to do, get him to do that? No, not too many. <laughs> well, but the thing is, to wrap it up, with you women out there, uh, and you men, right? uh, how many mm, women or men could do what she's doing uh, with her condition, which mm, I believe yeah. God heals and can heal? Mm. Don't anybody out there tell me that you don't have enough faith. I don't mm -hmm. believe that. No. All right? That's a bunch of garbage, I'll tell you. You heard it right from me. Yeah. God heals. Yeah. Some people going around saying this, going around saying that. I don't know why God don't heal some people. I know that. But you know what? When she went to Israel with me, I've been there 15 times, like 14 times. I'm going for the final time next year, uh, in next October, November. She went three, how many times? Four times with me, right? Three, I think. Three times. <laughs> she took all the tours, except the long walk down into the, down into the uh, wow. you know, garden there, you know. <laughs> so, if you're out there today, you want to talk about someone who has faith, <laughs> and someone who's a good wife, <laughs> and someone who brought her into my, as we call, crossing path, <laughs> into my life. And to her children, that they're all Christians, and, and some of them aren't where they should be, and like my children aren't either. We're all under construction. Amen. If we can just remember that. Mm. Nobody's called to do what I'm doing. She ended up as my co-host on TV, as everybody knows, mm. right here, okay? 
And the one thing I'm going to tell you something, if you're out there and you're looking for a husband or a wife, mm -hmm. and this, this really happened to me mm -hmm. in Florida, I was down a place called Villages. <laughs> and I was single. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is, uh, you might like it or might not, but it don't matter. But I was up in a place of square dance and I was walking around like I was Mr. America because I was single and <laughs> all these women down there, widows or whatever. So not I, enough I called, men, I too many women. We were, we, were, we were just dating, I guess. I called her and I, and I said, well, I'm, I'm up here. And she said, what are you doing? And mm -hmm. she said, oh, I'm up here at uh, Square Dance and mm -hmm. they're dancing and having a good time. And, said, uh, and I said, I'm just having a good time. And I don't know why I called her. Because <laughs> you so, missed me. So I said, uh, I'm going home and go to bed. You know what she said? Who is? <laughs> Tell everything you know. <laughs> That's going out. Probably some religious person. Some no joy. Won't understand that. Follow me, saying. And that's why I believe God has blessed my wife and I, and the people and our pastor here, and his wife, and how we cross paths in the ministry. And I have a little surprise for all of you. And Joyce probably knows about this, but. If I to finalize this up, and I'm going to close with a sinner's prayer because full mm -hmm. gospel businessmen, that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. it's, we're in business, you know, it's women too. We're in business to save souls. There's so many people who run the church that are going to go to hell, mm -hmm. like I mean. I was a Methodist, baptized in water, if I'd have died, I'd have went to hell. Nobody likes that preaching. Mm -hmm. Nobody likes it, but it's the truth. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, 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 mm -hmm. A man walked up to me, and Joyce knows this, and this is what I'm going to do for you people here tonight, for Joyce and for her, because of what has happened in our lives. Mm -hmm. A man called me on the phone and said, I want to meet you at the office. He, said, he picked up a DVD of our movie, The Don mm -hmm. Reed Store, and he I want to meet you at the office. He was a prison guard, met me at the office, and he said, uh, I've watched it four times, huh. and that's the story of my life. And he handed me a check for $1,850 oh. to give away DVDs to people, whoever God wants me to. Oh. Joyce and I are going to give everybody here tonight a free DVD oh. as you go out the door. You can take it with you if you have one. It's not for you. It's for somebody else. Give it away. Some people won't even pass out DVDs or tracks or flyers. They've never told their kids or children or husbands or wives about crossing paths, but you want to tell you something. Hmm. I stand, and Joyce and I stand here as a living witness of what Jesus Christ can do in Amen. man's life. Amen. Amen. We all agree on that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you also, uh, all of us here, if you'll pray with me, if you feel like saying out loud, you don't have to, but when you say something, that'll encourage somebody else, okay? I want you all to bow your heads and pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I am a sinner. Right now, right now, by faith, by faith, I receive you. I receive you into my heart. Into my heart. I believe. I believe that Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Is the Son of God. Died on the cross. Died on the cross for yes. me. Jesus. For me. I believe Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ arose from the grave. Arose from the grave. Walked on this earth. Walked on this earth. Ascended to heaven. Ascended into heaven. And intercedes. And intercedes for me. For me personally. Personally. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Right now. Right now. Write my name. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. I am born again. I am born again. Thank you. And I want to thank you. Because I asked this. Because I asked this. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Some people out there couldn't even pray that. I'm telling you people, they just can't even open their mouth. They're so embarrassed sometimes they're unsaved. But let me just tell you real quick here. And this is the truth. Tell this to your children, your grandchildren, okay? There's a man and a woman. The Bible says death and judgment. Does everybody know that? Mm -hmm. yeah. There is no such thing as purgatory. Right. You hear what I'm saying, people? <laughs> and anyway, death and judgment. So this woman, this man, they died, went mm -hmm. to heaven. And God said to him or her, what right have you got to be in my presence? 
Mm -hmm. And she said, well, I did this. I went to Sharon General Hospital. I donated my time. I did this. I did that. I, I never drank. I never gambled. I never went, committed adultery. I was a good person. I went to church every Sunday. I helped people. Mm -hmm. And God's sitting on the throne like this, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Listen to me. Sitting on the throne. He said, okay, you've been here an hour in my presence. And you haven't mentioned the name Jesus Christ. Not once. 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 And God says, I'm going to judge you to hell. The Bible says in John 14, 6, no one comes to the Father except what? The Son. The Son. But crying. But crying. God has to do this someday to keep his word. Amen. That's why we must tell the word, get the name of Jesus on their, on their tongue, on their mouth. <coughs> Confession, Romans 10, 9 and 10. Now, that man or woman, whoever it might heart. be, maybe it makes a point. But let me tell you what I do, what you do, and you should. You die, you go to heaven. You walk up to God, and God says, Marcia, Billy, John, Bill, whoever you are, William, John, <laughs> what right you got to be in my presence? Jesus! Amen. Amen. Some people can't even do that. Mm -hmm. They can't raise their hands unless they've got a gun in their back. <laughs> That's what it's all about, people. It's not about you and me or Joyce or her going to Russia for being good, or being good parents and good holidays and presents and Christmas. It's all about Jesus. Amen. Do we all agree? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, God bless you. Bless you, Joyce. Now, I'm going to pray for Joyce here right now, okay? Oh, Everybody, if you don't mind, just take a minute. Father, thank you for my wife. Thank, thank you for Jesus. her sharing the testimony, Amen. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you're going to heal her legs and feet. Jesus. For somebody out there that's watching this mm -hmm. testimony tonight, your mm -hmm. decision time is coming. Get rid of your pride. Tell mm -hmm. your husband and wife, that they've mm -hmm. got to be born again. If you're born again, if you don't know how to tell them they're born again, then pick up the Bible, read John 3.3 3, until it gets into your spirit. Mm -hmm. Use Joyce even more as my co-host, my wife. Mm -hmm. I thank you for her. I thank you for her family to stand behind her. I thank mm -hmm. you for my family. I thank mm -hmm. you for the meeting here tonight, all these full mm -hmm. gospel businessmen and women here tonight, mm -hmm. Lord. I thank you for the church. Mm -hmm. I thank you for the pastor and his life. Yes, life. yes. But I thank you most for salvation Amen. in Jesus Christ, Amen. my Lord, my King, my Savior, King of Kings, bread of life, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.